Right, everyone. Um, my name is Kevin Coots. I'm director of the Poulton Research Project in Cheshire. Um, if you just are wondering, I'm not standing far away. I'm, in fact, extremely short. OK, so it is my pleasure to talk to you today about a topic that is very, very closely linked to Peter's. And it's with great admiration and respect that I get the chance to talk straight after Peter's talk, which is amazing. Because I'm going to be talking about investigating frontier identity in Roman Cheshire from a single site. I'm <coughs> not into those big debates on Romanization and what it means. Or I don't want to show you big maps of wonderful tribal territories with great straight lines that never existed. I want to talk to you about the physical evidence from one site and how that physical evidence has ramifications for the region and future studies. So because when the evidence does exist, it is there. So you're about to hear the evidence from an initial study, but more evidence is being dug up every year. And frustratingly, we came across some critical evidence this year, which hasn't been analyzed yet, but you'll hear everything up to last year. Frontier identity is one of those big questions that we've just covered. What is frontier identity? What is a frontier? I've heard many different ways of it being explained over the last two days. So that's not something I want to deeply get into. But there is, in this region in Cheshire, a high level of knowledge of the fortress itself. It's got a long pedigree of amazing excavators. Some of the pioneers of archaeology have worked here over the last 100 years. And excavations go back you know, at least 200 years. We know lots and lots about the fortress itself, but there is very little known about the rural area, the Praetor Legionis, the meadows of the legions which surrounded it. We don't even know how big the Praetor Legionis was. So we don't know that much about it in northwest England and Cheshire, but we do know that it could be up to 500 kilometers square. It could be very, very big. There is a limited number of identified rural sites and the moisture retaining soils that of Cheshire have made it difficult to actually identify sites from aerial photography in the rural areas apart from in the driest seasons. You will also find that there are a lot of acidic soils here. So things such as animal bone assemblages don't often survive in the rural areas, making it very difficult for us to find out what's going on even when we see those sites. But what is really, really difficult is when you're studying the Iron Age and Roman transition. Because Cheshire, as if you hear my talk tomorrow, is not known for its Iron Age. So we do have a problem when we're trying to understand who were the people of what is now rural Cheshire and how did they interact with the legions? Because we haven't had the evidence. And here is a picture, an image, a map of rural Cheshire West, rural Chester, with the fortress at Chester in the centre, and a series of known Roman settlements. And they've been excavated to different levels, such as Tatton Hall, you'll see there's not much known about it. Only a few building blocks have been found underneath a church, which indicate high status. Or you might have Satan Camp, Holt, where there's a lot known. But many of these sites don't have earlier Iron Age archaeology. And when they do, it's usually very sporadic. You may have heard of the excellent excavations at the amphitheatre, under Don Garner and Tony Wilmot, which has produced the remains of Iron Age Roundhouse and other features. But they were heavily truncated. And you'll find this has been a few Iron Age features at Satan Camp. There has been other um, Iron Age Romana British excavations, such as on the Wirral. I, when I talk about the Wirral, which is this peninsula... Sorry, I'll just get my laser pointer. This peninsula here. I still class this as Cheshire because I was born here in Cheshire pre-boundary changes, and now I'm from Merseyside. But if I'm trying to sound posh, I still say from Cheshire. <laughs> and there has been excavations there, especially Irby, which has produced Iron Age in Romana British, but it's still very sporadic. And of course, we have the Port of Mells, which has shown Iron Age activity occurred there, but it was wiped out in the 19th century, so we don't have the physical evidence. So that physical evidence of the Iron Age and the Roman together, we've never had it in a decent big way. And that's how you tell the difference. That's how you tell what's going on by having the two periods side by side at the same site. So then it comes to a site that does produce this material, the Poulton Research Project in Cheshire. Now, we can actually have a look back here. Here's Poulton here, five miles south of the legionary fortress of Chester. So it should be well within the Praetor Legionis. Now, the one thing I will say about this map, and I'll speak to the person who made it, we are down as a villa site which we are most definitely not. Not yet. Give me a few years, we might find one. But we should be down 
as a civil settlement or rural site. That's where the evidence is at the moment. But we're five miles south of Chester in a small rural farming hamlet, which is, you know, most people don't even know it's there because there's no through road. It's a typical classic medieval settlement with your central farms surrounded by agricultural fields. And within one field, Chapel Field, the 55 acres of which you can see here, <coughs> we have found a multi-period landscape hitherto unknown in comparison in lowland northwest England. It has produced material from the Mesolithic right the way up to the early post-medieval, but it's produced Iron Age, Roman, Saxon, and medieval. But today we're here to talk about the Iron Age and Roman. So, Trench 1, we'll see in a second, Trench 1 is the site of a medieval chapel, but also Roman archaeology. And we will see shortly that trenches 16 and 50 are Iron Age and Roman. So we have two different sites. And the reason we came here in this rural field to excavate was because we were looking for a lost abbey. And I think this might be in my next slide. Nope, no. Nope. We're looking for a lost abbey. And we found a medieval rural chapel. And that chapel had 970 graves excavated so far. But they were producing Roman material culture over a thousand years earlier than the graves that we were excavating. They were <coughs> digging through earlier Roman levels. <coughs> and we went looking for what we thought was a Roman building. We now know that the building was actually where the chapel is now. You'll see pictures of that later on. So they were digging through Roman levels. But we then found shortly after so this is where the chapel is, you'll see a picture later. In this area, a good 80 to 90 meters to the north of it, we found an Iron Age settlement, purely by accident. And this Iron Age settlement was like nothing ever seen before in lower northwest England in its longevity of use, in the survival of the roundhouse ditches, and in the material culture that came from them. In this one trench, we have had over 5,000 Iron Age finds. It really is a big headache. And I had to call in a lot of favours for the post -ex. But you can see there's multiple intercutting roundhouses here. And this is spanning eight centuries of occupation. From the 8th century BC right the way up to the end of the 1st century BC. You can also see intercutting Roman features. Roman kilns, Roman ditches, so there's Iron Age and Roman. But remember it's 8th to 1st century BC for the radiocarbon dates. And Surrounding the roundhouses were deep ditches that have provided an excellent environment for the preservation of domestic half waste <laughs> and all of the material that came with us that had been. <coughs> and because they were deep, up to 0.83 meters deep, all of the domestic waste was preserved in them to a very high level, like has never been found before. What did we find? Well, we found a very important and very variable array of material culture. You may have heard of Peter talk before about the um, VCP, Cheshire VCP, the Iron Age salt container, which we find here. Oh, sorry, here. And we have nearly 10 kilograms of it, the largest amount ever found in lowland northwest England, one of the largest amounts in the country. We have an anvil, we have the worked antler industry, small local industry that's still showing affiliations to outside the region in the south of England. We have the deposition ritually of metal items such as adges, abses, industrial waste, and this is just showing a small part of it, the rest is tomorrow, and we even have coprolites. So basically, those are desiccated dog poos. All I can say is I didn't know what they are, and I rubbed them against my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I've got no idea how I've got a girlfriend. But we also have animal bone preserved disease ditches. This is the first proper animal bone assemblage ever discovered in lowland northwest England. So we have a chance to look at what animal husbandry was like in the Iron Age. And just to give you a clue, horse jaw, cattle jaw, horse jaw, uh, sorry, cattle jaw again, and cattle ribs. But when we go to <coughs> Trench 1, so this is Trench 16 to 50. That's where the prehistoric was. Here in Trench 1 is the chapel. Now the chapel here, the foundations of the medieval chapel, is surrounded by a ditch system here. This ditch system was uncovered when we excavated the northern graveyard, and it's far deeper than the medieval graves. And it's actually a Roman ditch system, surrounding a building that predated this one by a thousand years. But within it were sealed Roman deposits that did not cut through any Iron Age. So there was no contamination with early Iron Age material. You'll find out shortly that 
any Roman features within the prehistoric, we didn't analyze anything from them for this study because they could be contaminated with early Iron Age material. But we had two distinct assemblages, one from here of Roman, one from here of Iron Age. And this is the excavation of the ditches. They're basically from material culture, late 1st to late 2nd century AD in date. So we're covering about 100, maybe 120 years. And we have a lot of material, again, from the Roman period, spanning the area excavated. We have ditches, such as ditches and gullies. We have halves, uh, sorry, that, that's uh, not half, sorry, we do have halves, but this is a, um, a pottery kiln or some kind of corn dryer. Here is a small oven. Here is a gully. And they've produced a lot of Roman material. Multiple thousands of finds, a diverse material assemblage with ceramics, animal bone. This span the late 1st into the late 4th century AD. We have roof tiles of the 20th Legion, so in contact to the military of Chester. We have high status material, such as this piece of a Roman archway, which was originally painted and plastered red. So we're showing links to the military. We're showing industrial remains. We're showing some variable <coughs> and respected, but quite a lot for rural settlement um, material culture, such as black burnishware, mortarium, um, okay, seven valley ware, and material that spreads right the way through. We even have a gaming board, glass counters, Samian ware, as you'd expect, and again, a large animal bone assemblage. Now, we don't yet have any of the physical buildings excavated for the Roman yet. The chapel destroyed the Roman building that predates it. We do know there are other buildings in the landscape, but we're dealing with this area before we go on to them. We want to put all of our actual energy into doing this. But we do have, again, a Roman animal bone assemblage. And these assemblages are quite rare in rural areas, but to have Iron Age and Roman to compare is just a one-off. So how do they compare? Can we use the animal husbandry techniques of the Iron Age and the Roman to see who's there in the Iron Age and the Roman? Because if you look at Iron Age pottery, well, people use it in the Iron Age. You look at Roman pottery, is it the same people through the generations? Is it a replacement? Is it a combination of the two? You don't usually have the information to tell, but the animal bone actually can give you an indication. So, what can the animal bone assemblage tell us about continuity or change across the Iron Age and Roman periods? I will let you know right now that there is a century and a half gap between them, okay? So our material is like 8th to 1st century BC, late 1st, and then you go into the late 1st. So at the very minimum, there's a 90 year, but probably a century and a century and a half gap. Well, the Iron Age species representation is the first recreation of Iron Age animals. And we are dominated by domestic, as you would expect. Cattle primarily, sheep and pig. We also have red deer and roe deer. Small, as I like to say, big deer and bambi. We have a wild cat. We have dogs, actually, dog sacrifices. And we have hares, horse, and if any of you studies Iron Age, we've got a fish bone. Now that is completely and totally bonkers. It's one fish bone that came from flotation. It came from flotation of the earliest roundhouse that dates from 731 to 398 calibrated BC. It came from a domestic, um, it came from a domestic backfill charcoal rich, and it was actually radiocarbon dated. It is one bone from a flatfish, a juvenile right-eyed flounder. What it's doing here, I don't know. I've got absolutely no idea what one bone is doing here from the sea. All I can tell you is it's there. If anyone's got an idea, I would <coughs> like to know. But how does it compare with the Roman assemblage? Well, look again. Dominant, cattle, sheep, pig, wild cat available. We've got Bambi back. We've got the big one back. We've got horse. We've got hare. We've got dog. But this time we have duck. We have oyster and we have chicken. So we do have some changes. But the overall order is similar again. But can that show continuity? Or is it just that that's what people did in the Iron Age and the Roman period? Well, when you take a closer look at these assemblages, you get a general idea. Now, these are based on two different studies. One for our HER report for the Iron Age and the other as a master's degree um, by a student at Edinburgh University. I myself am not an animal bone specialist, but I will answer any questions you have as best I can, and I am happy to share the reports and, and um, 
the master's dissertation with you if you wish to study further. So what did we find when we looked at them? Well, the Iron Age has 1,008 individual bones, you know, basically NISP, number of individual specimens, not including calcine bones, with generally moderate to good preservation. The Romans contained 5,480, not including calcine bone. 80% of it was quite fragmentary, but the rest was very well preserved. And what did it show us? Between the Iron Age and the Roman period, cattle does not change significantly. They are basically pretty much the same. We have that same general order. We do see a decrease in sheep and pig from the Iron Age to the Roman period, but they stay very, very similar. So does that show continuity or change? Well, what is very interesting about it is, is just to show you, we also have horse increases in percentage from 4.46 to 6.04%. That, and the find of an extra horse in another context would change that. It's still quite a small assemblage, but it's initial for what we're looking for, because we know there's more evidence. When we look at the age ranges, it tells us a little bit something about it. We might suggest continuity, but look at the age ranges. In the cattle, all age ranges were present. So they were slaughtering at all age ranges, and the cattle could make relatively advanced ages if they weren't killed earlier. But for the Roman period, virtually everyone was above two years, indicating that they used for traction and dairying. Now, when you take a look at sheep, there is no real extremes of age in the Iron Age, but a third died before two months in the Roman period. But the majority then survived to maturity. And with pig, no very young examples in the Iron Age, only adult and young, suggesting, actually, suggested by the author, that they were brought in for slaughter. But there was a general lack of younger pigs in the Roman period and generally complete skeletons. So it, it's very similar in the Iron Age to Roman. But then we go on to the two things that show the difference. Cut versus chop marks. From my reading, when you get into the Roman period, you get into the real cleaver stuff, the real aggressive passes of aggressive ways of butchering animals. Specialised cleavers, specialised ways of butchering. And we do see that, so there is a change. There is a definitive change. The Romanization, sorry, I didn't use that word, the effects of the Romans in the region is definitely having a distinct effect on Poulton. But that's against the Iron Age, which is mostly cut marks. But when you look again at the Roman period, although it's dominated by cleaver marks, they're still using cut marks in the sheep and the pig primarily. Although cleaver marks are dominant, they are mostly cut marks and mostly on sheep and pig. So they do exist. And when you compare them, there are distinct similarities. This is initial, it is pilot, but there are distinct similarities between the Iron Age assemblages and the Roman assemblages, which may indicate that there is continuity in population continuity with people still practicing in Iron Age ways, but adapting to Roman ways of life and the influence of Chester. A tentative conclusion from this analysis by Roxanne Guilford in 2018 was that Poulton does not follow the general trends of a heavily Romanized settlement with connections to a military urban center, but may instead represent a northwest regional identity that does not follow the typical status-based economy recognized in the southern regions of England. And just to add to that, because it's the first time I've ever done this talk, the increase in, ro in horse bone, she told me, is very much Iron Age to get a higher percentage of horse bone, suggesting, again, we have some continuity in the general <coughs> assemblage. So the initial indications are that we are dealing at least partially with the same population through the Iron Age and the Roman period, but showing changes on account of Roman interaction with the legionary fortress at Chester five miles away. Whether that's just through contacts or through the population mingling is another thing. But there is evidence there. And the main thing to take from this is that this year I excavated a ditch that actually <coughs> a big D enclosure that produced a massive animal bone. And what's important is it produced Roman animal bone at the top, but nothing but Iron Age fibers <coughs> at the bottom. So I think I've got the site where you actually see the transition. So it is a pilot study. There's lots to do, just for the record, we've got no wheel type approaches. But we do have a lot of metal work as well, just in case anyone's interested, including military metal work with connections to Chester. But it's an initial pilot study. So it does show that the evidence is there. A more in-depth study should provide more detailed answers. I'm not here to rewrite what everyone has done. I'm here to say the evidence is there. We've got a little insight into it. And I think we've got a bigger one. 
every year we should get more. So I can come back in two years, hopefully my hair wouldn't have receded, and I can give you more detailed study. But I do welcome any questions. Thank you.